Suddenly, a saucer-like craft flew directly over the camera. Three landing gear apparatus opened, and the object landed on the dry lake bed. And it's typical uh, saucer shape, a double lenticular shape, metallic. And they went out, picked up their cameras, and moved on out the water and found me. And he lifted off, put the gear back in the well, and climbed out at a very high rate of speed and disappeared. Cooper had the film footage of the strange craft developed. By the time it returned from processing, he had gone up through the ranks to report the incident. I don't know the colonel telling me to, uh, you know, when the film arrived at my desk to put it in the carrier pouch or get Curry there at my office by that time already. And they arranged me to fly in our base airplane back to Washington with these films. Did you watch the film? We didn't have a chance to run it. I had a chance to hold it up to the window and look at it. It was a pretty good film. After the developed film was sent by plane to Washington, it was never seen or heard of again. Did you keep in touch with anybody about it or discuss it? How would I keep in touch with anybody about it? There's no way within the military or within the government of keeping track of something that is classified unless you're directly involved in it. No, I was not. You sent me a call, right? So here's the best of the best telling us that uh, ETs exist. Take a look at what this guy says. They obviously have a different body configuration than we do, and the little, of the little grays, that's the most prevalent one. He walked on the moon. Tonight, he says, aliens are among us. Former astronaut Lake Worth resident Edgar Mitchell has raised some eyebrows and ruffled some feathers with his claims. Tonight, Michelle Hive Civiloy goes one on one with this true believer. With his beloved Terrier in his lab and his comfortable Lake Worth home, he could be a retired insurance salesman. But take a look at Edgar Mitchell's wall, his photo gallery, that picture taken on the moon, February the 6th, 1971. What more can an explorer want than to be where a human have never been and to observe, gather your data, and go back and tell the people? Ed Mitchell can captivate you talking about his nine hour and 17 minute moonwalk. It was a record. But there's something else he'd like you to know. I don't know how many or where or how they're doing it, but uh, they've been observing us and here for quite some time, and we see these all the time. Ed Mitchell is a straight talker and a true believer that we are not alone. I believe what I'm saying, and I cite the evidence that I know. He says the government he served in the military and as an astronaut is perpetuating cover-ups of alien sightings, going all the way back to the legendary 1947 Roswell incident. An alleged alien spacecraft crash where remains were allegedly recovered. The reason for the denial was uh, number one, we didn't, they didn't know that these were hostile and could we uh, protect ourselves from them. Didn't want the Soviets to know, so they could devise to, to lie about it and cover it up. Mitchell is unbothered by critics who think the guy with the right stuff has taken a wrong turn. He has no doubt there are alien craft observing Earth right now. And many more out there looking for us. How many civilizations could there very be there are? Billions. We got billions of uh, billions and billions of stars in a galaxy, and billions and billions of galaxies. And it doesn't take uh, but a, but a few planets around a few stars to have quite a few uh, civilizations. Dr. Mitchell is one of only twelve people who have walked on the moon. He says he has never personally seen an alien who believes people who say they have. So, the best of the best of the best completely nuts or what? They've been there, done that. Yeah, I think we have to give them some credit in life. So what's that mean? Well, if you want to see more, citizenshearing.org. They have about 33 hours DVD sets of military personnel coming forward and talking about their stories. And they did that before there were six former congressmen in the United States. They did a mock commission. They conducted like you would normally. The guy who gave the opening speech for that session in 2010 was Paul Helder, who was, uh, I was talking about earlier. He's the highest member, ranking member of NATO to come forward and say, this is real. Right? So he does the opening statement. It's great stuff. Question is, is do they take uh, super or unleaded in their flying saucers? Uh, do they use US dollars? 
These are social organization tyranny and uh, what they do with it. Some basic questions I would think I would have for you. Chapter 13, we live in a free and democratic society. Three, well, I only voted once for something. Otherwise than that, I vote for people and they do whatever the hell they want. And uh, I can't go plan for medicinal purposes. I'm not allowed. And if I go voting, I don't have to have certification and I won't get verified on the bar. And every year I see less and less freedom. And if you were with me bringing the Ken O'Keefe yesterday, you would have seen that even more. So when I look at this and I look at the uh, system in the United States, what's going on is there's this duality between Republicans and socialists and Democrats, whatever you want to call them. And you have these people who need freedom, and you don't just want to it, don't give taxes, and um, you know what, we will help each other. And, but the problem is that these people are tied to corporations and they're consolidating wealth. And on the other side, you seem to have the socialists, and they want to take other people's money from the rich. They always say, the rich never give it up, so that's the coming from the middle class to pay for social programs. But when I look at both groups, they want what's best for people, right? And the whole thing becomes a problem because of money. We don't have the money to do what we want. We have to tax because, well, we say we have to pay the interest on the debt and we have all this other stuff. But if we go back to the chapter on money and we had our commonwealth, the government puts the money into play, a lot of the stuff goes away. It goes away very, very quickly. Can I say something? Yeah. say money is the problem. The problem is we're not operating on a sound money system. And the problem is that, like you said, the only value left in money these days is trust. And that's true. And that was done here in Canada when the Bank of Canada was privatized. When you mentioned in the late 70s, it started in the 30s. But the problem is, is money doesn't have a refuge value anymore, like a gold standard, for example. So the value of money is no longer standardized in any way. So now currency is what becomes, and the market becomes what basically governs the value of money. And that's the big problem. And the other problem is the fact that the government is no longer in control of producing the, well, not printing the money, but controlling the monetary system. So if you don't have that, you don't have any regulatory system. So basically, like you said earlier, every time we print money, we're going into debt. So we're losing money constantly, not only in the market, but in the way that we print money. So if we go back to a sound monetary system, then we can allow, and that's what Paul Hellyer is talking about as well, and that's what he wants to do, because he's seen it, you know. Yeah. So if we go back to a sound monetary system, then we can start from scratch, and then we can start investing again like we used to, with, you know, before all this happens. Yeah, and all these problems between the two groups here. Oh, but that's the big bullshit. This is, you know, divide and conquer. It's the art of war applied. You know, yeah. laughing their asses. Exactly. Um, to see how they fix elections in the U.S., there's lots of uh, documentaries out there. You can go on YouTube and watch them, and they'll show you how the electronic voting system is absolutely rigged. They have uh, guys who go in and they hack them, show you how they hack them. So, these swing votes in places like Florida and stuff, and they out that certain groups <coughs> own those machines. It's ridiculous. So, what is the New World Order at the end of the day? Um, you ask, how is all this problem, this whole thing? Where does it come from? Where does it stem from? And it always points up always points up to a command and control structure behind the scenes. And uh, it's a pyramid scene. Just watch, watch one more little video here. We're getting from this money that's happening. From this money process about the, uh, the, the energy crisis, the rest of the world. This is the afternoon conference, it's kind of about 4 o'clock, 4, 4, 4, You were talking about, uh, one of the American delegates, I, I wasn't told who exactly was, was talking about the uh, <clears throat> the concern that the American citizens have had with the, with, you know, the housing prices are going down, so they're not investing that money. So what they needed to do is they needed to create the illusion that everything is going well. So what they're going to do over the next year, year and a half, is to bring the market back up to 1998, 1999 levels. They're going to get all the suckers to invest whatever little money they have left over. <clears throat> and that's when they're going to make the economy they need to destroy the economy because as we're running out of oil, when people don't travel, at least that's what they're saying, when people don't travel, when people don't have money, they don't travel, they don't spend money, which means you don't waste on oil and natural gas. That's the absolute source. I mean, it's ballpark. So if you have the source, well, actually, the truth be 